All right. We have officially made superheated steam. Got a main steam header at 2,500 PSI and 1,050 Fahrenheit. And the next thing we're going to do with it is we're going to take it to the steam turbine and we're going to convert all this thermal energy into kinetic energy. And you'd think that I'd be better at this by now, but I'm not. All right, so the turbine. So the turbine is basically a set of fan blades and the steam comes across the fan blades and spins the shaft. So the main steam header comes up and it splits off into two main steam stop valves. And then that goes to a steam chest. And then you have four control valves. All these valves on the turbine are spring shut, hydraulic pressure to open. So the HP, which stands for high pressure, the high pressure turbine has seven stages, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven stages of turbine blades all on a single shaft. And the steam makes its way through them from the control valves to the smallest sets of blades in between each set of rotating blades there's a set of fixed blades so the steam hits the blades at an angle and it gives up energy and converts it into motion it also gives up heat as it goes across and then it hits some stationary blades and those are redirected so it has the best possible angle for hitting the next set of rotating blades and so the steam flows across all of those blades and as it goes it's got less pressure and as you take the pressure off the steam it expands and then as it is exhausted out of the last stage here this steam is called cold reheat and cold reheat steam is somewhere around 600 PSI and 600 Fahrenheit. Now this 600 Fahrenheit is lower than saturated pressure at 2,500 pounds. 2,500 pounds saturation was around 670 Fahrenheit. So we have given up a lot of heat throughout this process. And as we give up heat, we come closer to saturation. And then if you give up any more heat, then you end up with water droplets. And a water droplet is 16,000 times denser than steam. And it's like throwing pebbles into your turbine blades. It will rattle the hell out of your turbine. It will eat up the blades. And it will cost you millions of dollars in time of not generating to replace them, as well as specialty and blades and blah, 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 blah. All right. So we can't afford to let this temperature get too low. So we take this 1600 degrees steam and we flow over here. Oh, you wondered why I left this blank space here, didn't you? Huh? So we've got more coils here. And the flue gas flows across these coils, the flue gas cools off, the steam heats up, and then we come out the other side as hot reheat. And then we go through the intercept valves, which are similar to the main steam stop valves. They're spring to shut, hydraulic open. 
and now we are at say 590 psi because whenever you travel down a tube you lose pressure from resistance but we are at a thousand and fifty Fahrenheit again all right how do we control that set point of a thousand fifty if you remember back on the soup uh, main steam side we sprayed a temperators in between the primary and secondary and in between the tertiary and final and that knocked that temperature down to our target of 1050. Do we spray water into the cold reheat to control the hot reheat at 1050? Yes we do. So we come off the boiler feed pump and we go through control valves we spray into the coal reheat. This is not tapping off of the discharge side of the boiler feed pump. The discharge side of the feed pump is about 3,000 psi at full load. This feed pump has several stages to take the pressure up from about 300 pounds off the DA up to that 3,000 pounds. So at an intermediate stage we have a scoop that steals some of that water at a lower pressure. So now we're only at a thousand pounds. Only. We're only at a thousand pounds. And we're spraying that into this because you need 3,000 pounds of pressure to spray into 2,500 pounds of pressure. You don't need 3,000 pounds to spray into 600 pounds and in fact it'll impinge on the walls and cause cooling of the metal without it having a chance to turn to steam yet and it will be harder on your system. It'll, also it'll be harder on your control valves because you'll have a larger DB across them therefore you'll have more they'll be pinched back tighter and that'll have more eating of the seats. And also since our goal is to cool it off the temperature at the boiler feed pump is upstream of several heaters and so the water will be cooler and have a greater cooling effect so it will take less water flow. So for all those reasons we take the flow, we take the pressure off of the boiler feed pump on an earlier stage to spray the temperation into the coal reheat. Now if we're trying to control temperature on the outlet why don't we spray on the outlet instead of the inlet? And the answer to that is we need to make sure that the water we're spraying in there has sufficient stay time to absorb this heat and get all vaporized and, you, you know, keep from throwing water into our turbine. Because water in turbines is bad. There's one more thing to add here, though. Whatever water we're putting in here turns to steam, and that is mass of steam that is flowing through this part of the turbine that didn't flow through the high pressure part of the turbine. So in a way, in a big way, you're losing efficiency. If, you, if all your steam goes through the high pressure turbine, that's where you actually get the most work. See how you dropped from, uh, from 2,500 pounds down to 600 pounds? So the rest of the section, you're only going from 600 pounds down to vacuum. The majority of your energy was already given up here. So we want as much steam flow to go through here and as possible, and putting steam in further down that'll skip that is wasteful. So how else can we control this 1,050 degrees? That was not good. I don't want blue there. All right, so at the, at the bottom, of the back pass, we have some dampers. Yeah, I don't like those two lines. All right, so the flue gas is running across here and it is what's doing the work of heating up the primary superheat steam and heating up the reheat steam. It also is heating up the water going through the economizer. But if you want to control how much of the flue gas goes on which side, so we choke back the flue gas using these dampers so that the cold reheat 
gets heated up to 1050 on the hot reheat side. And then the other dampers work opposite of them so that if this is at 50%, this is also at 50%. If this is choked back to 30%, this is open 70%. So you get about the same amount of resistance across your whole back pass all the time. So the reheat side gets exactly what it needs to get 1,050, and the primary superheat side gets whatever's left. All right. So after that, we go to the IP turbine, intermediate pressure, and that has five stages, one, two, three, four, five. And you'll notice the stages are much bigger on the IP than they are on the HP. And that is because the steam has expanded. The, more, the less pressure you have, the more the steam expands, the more surface area you need to get the same amount of work or to get as much work as you can. So. flows across and how will I dim this color show that it has less energy so then we exhaust out of the final stage of the IP and we run across and now we are going to the low pressure turbine. It needs to be more symmetric than that. There are six stages of the low pressure turbine. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. And the steam goes down off of the crossover pipe. So from the IP turbine out the top crossover pipe and down to the LP and at our plant we have four sections of LP not just two but I've clearly run out of space and this steam flows across all those and you see as it goes now it's expanded so much that we need even more surface area but rather than having giant enormous freaking blades we have, we double up the number of sections. So we've got four times as many blades in each section. And it's symmetric. So you have, th this section is exactly like this section, is exactly like the other two on the uh, LPB. And then after it goes across all six sections, it exhausts down into the condenser. Let's go back to blue, even though it's not, let's, how about a different color blue? How good a, I want something purpley. Okay, so we have tube bundles and each of these has thousands of little tubes in it and this is circulating water coming from the cooling tower and then the steam hits these tubes let's see let's throw some more pressure numbers on there So here we are at 120 pounds 
and say 700 Fahrenheit. And here we are at basically zero pounds. And we are at 200 Fahrenheit. And then we hit these tubes. And these tubes to cool that 200 Fahrenheit down. And when you cool the steam down to saturation, it condenses back to water. Let's go back to the purple. God, man. I need to figure out how to make shortcuts for these colors. So now all that steam collapses down into water drops. Collapses on the tubes and it drips down. And then at the bottom, there is a well that catches that water. And then condensate pumps, which go to the feed pump in a much more complicated manner than that. All right, so the same way that when we added heat to the water in the walls and it changed the seam, it expanded and that created pressure. When we take the heat out of the saturated steam here and turn it into water, the steam collapses and it's way smaller, way more dense. And as it converts from steam to water, this pressure goes even lower and it pulls a vacuum. And you end up at, let's see, 1.2 PSI A, that's an A, pounds per square inch absolute, and atmospheric pressure is 14.7, so a minus 1.2, a 1.2 PSI A is a minus 13.5 PSI. So you're going from 120 pounds to minus 13.5 pounds. Give you an idea of the range.